I mean, the the trouble with the uh, the drug abuse issues, there's never really not been a problem, it's never really gone away, but I find what's changed lately with the environment with respect to, to drug abuse is that there is more access to information through the internet and that kind of a thing. And what I find is that for people who are stuck in the position of having an addiction problem, information is out there that facilitates them actually becoming more addicted. But there's very little that is used in terms of medicine leveraging the idea of getting people the reverse of the information. So what's happened is, is that if doctors versus addiction is an arms race, the doctors just aren't keeping up. So in, in my mind, it was time to move things to a, to a level where we started leveraging things like technology and media to be able to spread the message that, well, sometimes these things can become a bigger problem than you think. And currently you went to um, a, a national newspaper mm -hmm. to talk about um, a drug that you're seeing. Is, is it more prevalent that you're seeing it or is it just the, the way in which it's being used? Mm -hmm. It's not more prevalent at all. As a matter of fact, you know, the whole bupropion problem is fairly new and very, very minor. But the difference is, is that unlike things like opiate addiction, which is Percocet, Oxycontin, fentanyl, these kinds of things, which are very well understood. This wasn't at all on the, the, the doctors' radar as far as it potentially being a problem. So what you had is a small but significant pattern of abuse that goes unrecognized, and that was the problem. As far as the media being involved, actually they came to me because what had happened was just recently, you'll be aware that the coroner for Ontario released an advisory that they've started to notice that there's been deaths from this particular drug and they were looking around for people who had a research interest in that specific molecule itself and it so happens that the National Post found me. And so you've seen it or you have been researching it? Well both, both. I mean we've seen it locally but part of that is uh, a bit of an example of getting answers to questions that you actually ask as opposed to not asking questions and not getting answers. So in the past nobody ever would have been in the position to uh, to question people trying to get refill prescriptions for this antidepressant. It's not a controlled drug, why would we even care? But when people start coming in with unusual stories and unusual patterns of injury, that's when we started asking the question locally. I don't think that there's any more of a problem with bupropion in North Bay as opposed to anywhere else. But what's happened is here, we've started collecting the data and we realized, oh, actually this stuff is quite dangerous. What are people doing with it? Like, I mean, aside from the regular prescription you as a physician giving it to a, a, a patient for a specific reason. Now they're going outside the confines of that and mm. using it in a, in a different manner. Yeah, I mean that's not really all that uncommon. The trouble is is that for the, the, the well understood patterns of addiction, say you get a bunch of Percocets, everybody knows and all you need to do is type into the internet that you can snort these things or inject them into your veins and that is well understood by physicians that if somebody comes into a uh, um, uh, into a, uh, a walk-in clinic or a hospital and starts asking for Percocets, so the doctor will stop them and say, wait, where, where are these things going? The trouble is, is that for the bupropion, nobody would have had it on their radar that these things could be abused in that way, but it turns out the addicts have found a way to do it, uh, much to their detriment sometimes, and they're spreading that knowledge through um, social mm. media and that kind of a thing. Going back to, to that situation, what, what do people have to do? I, I mean, what do we as a society have to do moving forward in terms of addressing these issues? Um, it seems to me like it's one crutch. Um, there were issues with oxycodone and, and whatnot. Um, the profession addressed it. Uh, pharmaceuticals made it so that you can't crush it anymore, etc. So now we move to the next crutch. Um, yep. Really, what has to be done? Well, addiction is addiction, right? And I mean, people um, have this mistaken idea that by specifically targeting certain chemicals, Oxycontin being a good idea, uh, a good example rather, that all of a sudden we're solving the problem. We're really not solving the problem of addiction because people will always find a way. And I don't think that it's necessarily um, realistic for a physician to say that we're going to quash addiction. It may not ever happen, right? As a society, um, the question becomes, is there actually more addiction these days or is it just identified better and more accessible, right? The answer is probably a little bit of everything, right? It's probably identified a little bit better, which is good, but again, that comes back to the idea of making sure that physicians ask the questions. So for bupropion, that's a perfect example of where really what I wanted to get out there, both the 
to the patients and to the physicians is that, well, we need to ask the question of whether or not this thing has become a problem. So that's one, right? The second thing, though, is this idea that since addiction is addiction is addiction, can we really get rid of it by stopping any one chemical? That's probably not the case. And root causes, I mean, this is a whole discussion in and of itself, but really root causes probably have, have more to do with what kind of social ills we've got going on these days. And, um, you know, uh, people not having um, sort of any sense of security or safety in their lives, no sense of purpose. I mean, that's a lot of what will make addictions worse. Right? It doesn't make it go away by saying that we will make somebody's life better, but it's just difficult to feel like there's any other alternative when your life is crap, right? The, um, the last element to it is this idea of accessibility, right? Um, there are probably things that we shouldn't have access to as a society. So for instance, cocaine is just a bad idea. It's just a bad idea. It kills people. Methamphetamine is a bad idea. So addiction is always going to exist granted. But if people are going to have to be addicted to something, there is this terminology in, in medi medicine called harm reduction. And it's probably relevant to say that there are certain things that shouldn't exist. Methamphetamine should never exist because it has no beneficial usage whatsoever and it kills people. So we're done. Right? And we as a society, we put down our foot on a number of issues. For instance, you're not allowed to drive around in cars with no seatbelts. We've taken a step and we've said, no, we're done on this. I get the idea that some people don't like the feeling of a seatbelt on, but as a society, we've put our foot down and said, but we ain't doing that. It's the same thing with coke, it's the same thing with meth. There's things that are too dangerous to, to tolerate. And if we get rid of those things, that's probably relevant. There's plenty of things that are accessible to be addicted to the internet is a good example, right? But people don't die from that. And so with bupropion now, we seem to be having examples of now where people are dying of it. We need to change the game. As physicians, though, you are pushed to the limit. Time is very, uh, very dear. Do you have that time to talk this through with your patients? And if you do, where do you send them outside of your care? Not all the time. I mean, you know, the, the idea of do I have the time to be vigilant about addiction every moment of the day? No. But if a 20-year-old comes in with a heart attack to my emergency room, do they get asked about cocaine? Damn straight they do. And I don't apologize for that. Now I'm having to widen the net a little bit, and I found a cocaine addict at the age of 62 the other day. Um, so we have to widen the net somewhat and what I'm pushing for is this idea of awareness that if somebody comes in with funny symptoms like they're having a heart attack or having a stroke and they happen to be on Wellbutrin, maybe we need to ask the question, what are you doing with this stuff, right? The, the drug is not harmful for its normal usage. It's perfectly good as an antidepressant. It's perfectly good as a stop smoking aid. But any medication can be dangerous and abuse. Tylenol is a great example. Most of the deaths that we see from drug overdose are from Tylenol that surprising no it's not it's not it's very very dangerous what do what do we look for um, those folks who are not in the medical profession if we suspect um, maybe somebody is misusing their medications well it would be the same whether you thought they were they were misusing um, a pill medication or whether you found little blotters with uh, with drops of LSD in their um, um, in their cupboard or something like that it's it's the same if you find a bunch of a bunch of empty 26ers of alcohol, it's all the same, addiction is addiction. So I think that it is a mistake to say that one chemical over another is necessarily the cause for alarm. If people are, are showing addictive, uh, addictive tendencies, they just need to get help. And it's probably also fair to say that the greater barrier to getting people help for addiction does not lie in a lack of services. There's plenty of services available, it's just that people don't ask for them.